I want to spend time in this video talking about solids. We spent all of chapter 5 talking about gases, and then with our look at intermolecular forces recently, we've been spending some time with liquids and phase changes and boiling, but I want to spend a little bit more time focusing on solids. We're going to spend most of this video talking about types of crystalline solids, but I would like to begin by talking about amorphous solids. Amorphous means that it doesn't have a set shape. There's no regular pattern in an amorphous solid. We'll see in a moment when we talk about crystalline solids, that's the defining characteristic, that you have this regular geometric pattern that repeats over and over again. Amorphous solids also don't have a really defined melting point. Amorphous solids will slowly melt over a broad range of temperatures, and they'll slowly transition from a solid to a liquid. You have this kind of intermediate gooey phase of it's not quite a solid, it's not quite a liquid. Think about burning a candle. The soft wax around the tip is not as rigid as the colder wax down below, but it's not the liquid that's dripping around the edge of the candle. This is true for other solids besides wax. Rubber and glass, for example, experience the same thing. They're all amorphous solids. They lack a regular crystalline pattern. By definition, crystalline solids do have a regular geometric pattern. And we spent a lot of time talking about ionic solids and how those formula units will repeat to make a lattice. But that can also be done through covalent bonding in what's referred to as a covalent network solid or just a network solid. You can also use intermolecular forces to link molecules together into a crystal. Think of a snowflake. Metals also form crystal lattices, but aren't held together by ionic or covalent bonding. They have their own special metallic bonding. All of these are examples of crystalline solids. All of these different types of solids, at their heart, have a regular geometric pattern that repeats over and over and over again. So I'm going to spend the bulk of this video filling in this chart. We're going to talk about these different types of crystalline solids. What are they composed of? What are the smallest parts of the crystalline solids? What forces hold them together? And then we'll talk about some of their characteristics. Do they have high melting points or low melting points? Are these solids very rigid or soft? Do these solids conduct heat and electricity, or are they insulators? And then we can look at some examples. So let's start with the ionic solids. Ionic solids have very, very high melting points. Very difficult to take something like salt and melt it, because those coulombic forces, those electrostatic forces that hold the cations and the anions together are really, really strong. The crystals are also held together very rigidly. These positive and negative charges just lock all of the ions into place. But, as things that are very rigid tend to be, ionic crystals can also be very brittle. It's very easy to take a big chunk of salt and grind it into a finer powder. And the reason is that if you can apply a little bit of force and displace a layer of the crystal, you can get the positive ions to start lining up with the positive ions, and the negative ions lining up with the negative ions. And instead of attracting each other, they repel. And the whole crystal will cleave or split up we know that many ionic solids are soluble, and when they do dissolve in water, they are electrolytic. They conduct electricity. So the ionic compounds do not conduct electricity as a solid, but they do conduct electricity if you dissolve them in water. That's because the ions are now free to move around, and when you have moving charge, that's an electric current. Let's get to this chart. Ionic solids are composed of cations and anions. They're held together by these electrostatic forces, these coulombic forces. They have relatively high melting points. They're very rigid crystals. As a solid, they do not conduct heat or electricity. They do when they're aqueous, but not as a solid. And any ionic compound you can think of would fall under this category. 